Hi there and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. Let's take a closer look at the Crochet Blanket Ruana. Like its name implies, this is a nice wrap that you can snuggle up in and it's nice and toasty warm. To make it, you're going to need Peyton's Alpaca Blend yarn in four colors. We used Slate, Onyx, Birch, and Tiger Eye. A crochet hook, size J10 or six millimeter, or size needed to obtain gauge, and three or more locking stitch markers. Now, I said it was a blanket, and I said it was warm, and it is, but one of the things that I love about this stitch pattern, which alternates single crochets and chain one spaces, is that it's warm and dense and gives you a richly textured look, but because of the chain spaces, it's not it's not so dense that it won't move. It'll give you a nice movement. It'll drape in a lovely manner when you're wearing it, but still give you lots of warmth. And these vertical lines of the plaid are put on after the stitching is made. So once you learn the stitch pattern, you make some very simple to count stripes, and then you put the fancy stuff on at the end. So let's get going and make our Ruana. The shaping on this piece is very simple. We're going to begin with our foundation chain down here. We're going to work a very simple two row repeat, alternating colors to get some stripes until we get up to here. And then you divide it and work the right front and left front separately. So let's take a look at the stitch pattern. It says uh, to begin chain 126. Now I'm not going to change 126 in this video or we will be here all day. So I have chained 26 and let's follow along with the instructions. Now I am working in the back or bump of the chain instead of the front or the V. You may do as you wish, but I find that working in the back gives me a neater edge. And since I'm going to put an edging on this, I want my edge to be as neat as humanly possible. But looking at first row, it says single crochet in second chain from hook. So skip the chain closest to the hook and go in the second one. And then it says chain one, skipped next chain, single crochet in next chain and repeat from star or asterisk. So we're gonna chain one, skip one chain, single crochet in the next chain. And we're gonna do that all the way across. Chain one, skip one chain, single crochet in the next chain. And once again, you can work in the front of the chain if you prefer. But I, frankly, I do all of my projects working in the back or the bump of the chain. I just find it to make a neater edging. We're gonna do this all the way across. Remember, I tension my yarn a little differently than most of you do. You tension it the way you tension it, all shall be well. I'm just a weirdo. <laughs> okay, we're almost to the end. Here I am at the end of the first row. Remember your row will be longer. And this is what it looks like. The chain one spaces are over the empty chain ones. And look how neat that edge looks because I worked in the back or the bump. You get a nice little V stitch that mirrors the top. All right, second row we have turned at the end of the first row. Second row says chain one single crochet in first single crochet, so that's the very first one. We're not skipping any. Single crochet in next chain one space, which is that very first chain one space. So you have two right in a row here. Chain one, skip the single, single in the chain one space. Chain one, Skip the single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, and we're gonna do that all the way across. Chain 
chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet right in the chain space. Now from here on out you're just going to repeat the second and third row over and over, but what you have to do is pay attention to the color changes because you're working in a stripe pattern. All right, let's take a look at the end of this third row. So we're coming up here, we have our single in the last chain space and then we're going to chain one and single crochet in the last single crochet. So fourth row says as second row and then we're going to uh, and then we're going to change to a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and catch up with this fourth row and then we will add color B at the end. Now here I am coming up at the end of the fourth row and at the end it says fourth row as second row join B and turn and the reason that we say that it says right here in the note to change colors work to last two loops on hook a first color then draw new color through remaining loops. So whatever your last yarn over is, you're going to do it in the new color. So essentially what happens here is you're changing colors at the end of the row, not the beginning. So here we are at the end of the fourth row. I'm going to do my last single crochet. So I'm inserting it in the last stitch and drawing up a loop. Now I'm going to change to the new color. Now I'm not going to tie a knot or do anything crazy. I'm just going to pick up a fold maybe six inches in from the end I can weave that in later. I don't like to put knots in my yarn. So the last yarn over of the last stitch in the old color is the new color. So I'm changing to color B here. So now I'm going to do the fifth row. So I've turned at the end of the fourth row. I'm going to chain one, single crochet in the first single crochet. Now that single crochet might be a little loose because I have yarn hanging out here. So that's okay if it's a little loosey goosey. Then I'm going to chain one, skip next single crochet, single crochet in the chain space and I'm going to do that all the way across. Now because I'm working in two different colors here, you can really see that little stagger of the single crochet. And at the end of this row, I'm going to change to my third color, to my C color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then from there on out, once again, you're just repeating the second and third row of the stitch pattern and you're changing color as often as the pattern is telling you to. Now what about those vertical lines that we see in the photograph? What happens to those? Well, we're going to do those at the very end in surface crochet and I'm going to show you how to do that too. But let's come up at the end of the fifth row, which is the same as the third row. 
and we're going to single crochet in the last single crochet and I'm going to turn and I know I need to change color so before I finish that single crochet I'm going to draw up the new color once again about six inches eight inches in from the end and pull up the new color on the last single crochet I'm going to leave that hanging I can weave it in later and then I'm going to go ahead and keep going repeating my second and third row See, and you can really see how the how the stitches are working now that you have three different colors going on so I'm going to keep going as long as the pattern tells me to now when I get halfway up again following the instructions what's going to happen is I'm going to work to the center and then there's some decreasing here so I will work this side separately to the end then I will go back to this main row do some decreasing on this side and work the same and they will be mirrored the stripes will match all the way across but I'm going to work these two pieces separately after I get that done I want to put the surface lines in so let me get a bigger sample so I can show you how to do that I've decided I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the edging on camera the first thing I want you to see is this note that says when working edging along lower edges of back and fronts do not work single crochet into every stitch as gauge for plain single crochet differs from gauge for the body pattern so what that means is if you're going to work across so this was uh, this is the bottom this is my foundation chain remember I worked in the back bump so I have that nice even edge um, normally if I was putting a single crochet edging on something I would see 25 stitches and I would work 25 single crochets but because this stitch pattern works up at a more narrow gauge than just working back in single crochet rows does if I went ahead and put a stitch in every stitch it's gonna stretch out and be too roughly so this is more of an art than a science I have to say you're going to have to take a stab at it and make sure that you have not too few stitches but not too many either you don't want it to ruffle or to pull but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the corner and in my mind I'm thinking I'm going to take away probably about 20% of the stitches so that would give me four stitches in a row and one off so I'm going to go one two now remember I'm working on the opposite side of the foundation chain on the stitches and I'm working right into the chain one space when I come to it now I'm going to skip one now do you have to go and skip every fifth no you can work out and see how it works for you you're going to have to put a few stitches in because remember your piece is much bigger than my piece is so it is absolutely going to matter but the most important point we're trying to make is that you do not want to put a stitch in every single chain and single crochet across because if you do you will have too many stitches and your edges will ruffle so I took out every fifth stitch you can try different variations to see what works for you now no matter what you do when you come to the corner now not the corners of the neck but the corners of the back and the corners of the front you're going to put three single crochets in the corner and that's so that the edging takes the corner goes around the corner and lays flat as you do subsequent rounds whenever you come to that center stitch of the three on an outer corner you're going to put three stitches in that so the same thing going up the side I want to work single crochet evenly spaced across and the pattern tells you the exact number that you're going to need for me I'm not worried about the exact number because my swatch is way smaller but you're going to just take a look at things you're not going to put a single crochet on the side of every single row because if you do again it'll be too many stitches and it'll be roughly so every four or five stitches skip one and see if that gives you a nice even edging and if it looks like it's getting too roughly skip another one if it looks like it's pulling too tight then add a couple stitches in so you see mine's laying flat 
So my uh, plan of eliminating every fourth or fifth stitch is working. But again, science, not art. Now, one more thing, since your, since your pattern tells you the exact number you have to have. So say for example, it says uh, 106 stitches evenly across lower edge. What I would probably do is put a stitch marker in thirds or in quarters across because if you are putting evenly spaced single crochet and you're counting in your head and you get to the very end and you have too many or too few, your tendency is to get a little wonky in there. You don't want to rip out. Who wants to rip out? So your tendency is to stick in too many stitches or too few. Whereas say uh, I put a stitch marker at uh, 53, which would be halfway across, then instead of trying to make 106 come out even all the way across, I'm only trying to make 53 come out even halfway across. Or if I marked it in quarters, you know, the what's half of 53 would be 26 and a half. So 26 on one, 27 on the next. It's much easier to fudge over 26 stitches than it is 106 stitches. So use those stitch markers I told you to get to uh, even out your work. After you get that first round in, you're going to work two more rounds of single crochet. Once again, putting the extra corner single crochets on what we call the outer corners, but uh, do not, and it says right here, do not work the extra single crochet corners of back neck edge because that's an inner corner. So we don't need the extras there. For the fourth round, working from left to right instead of from right to left as usual, work one reverse single crochet in each single crochet around. Now I know we've done that before, but let me just show it to you real quick and I'm just gonna start where I am. Um, I'm gonna chain one to get my hook in the right place. So you've been single crocheting in this direction and you've done your couple of your three rounds and then when you wanna do your last round for your crab, it's also called the crab stitch if you have seen that. Um, what you're doing is you're single crocheting in the stitch before the one you just worked in instead of the stitch after. The trick is not to turn the work or not to turn the hook. Your hook is still facing the direction you would normally stitch in and I know this is black and a little difficult to see, but I'm going in the stitch like I normally would and making a single crochet. But instead of going forward, I'm going back to the empty stitch before. So once again, I'm not turning the work I am not turning the hook. I am single crocheting the way I always would. It's the order in which I'm filling in the stitches that's different. And this is called reverse single crochet. It's also known as crab stitch. And it makes a nice corded edging, which is especially nice on this Ruana because you want a nice thick edging so that everything stays stable and because the fabric is a nice plush fabric that cord looks really terrific. So that's how you're going to do the edging. And then the last thing we have to do is the surface chain to get the rest of our plaid, to get our vertical stripes in. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a closer look at that surface crochet. So it says beginning at front edge after the edging. So this uh, vertical does not happen on the edging you will uh, begin where the color work starts. Uh, place markers on the 11th, 21st, 31st, and 41st stitches across the last row of the stripe pattern. With right side facing, join B with slip stitch to center chain one space at foundation row under first marked stitch. Keeping yarn at back or wrong side of work, slip stitch into each chain one space in alternate rows above joining space to create a vertical a straight vertical chain of surface slip stitch stitches to the end of the back above the edging. Taking care to slip stitch loosely to avoid pulling in the work as you stitch and end off. Boy, that sounds complicated, but it's really, really not. So here's how we do it. All right, your pattern's going to tell you where to put those stitch markers. So what I'm going to do is put a slip stitch on my hook and I'm going to join into that marked chain it is important that you always, always, always keep the working yarn to the back or the wrong side of the work. So all I'm doing right now is joining. I put my hook down through the chain. I had a slip stitch on my hook and 
I did a yarn over and pull it up and my working yarn is still on the back. Now it says alternate rows. And the reason it is is because the chain one sort of moved back and forth. So if I'm going in alternate rows, I'm going to the one that's always straight on top of the one below. So I have to be very, very careful to not pull the stitch too tight or it's going to pucker like crazy and we don't want that. So I'm going to go all the way up here into my space and I'm going to bring my work, my working yarn up from the back and I'm going to finish the slip stitch. And that's a really long loop. Let me get it real close so you can see it. It's a very long loop. And I'm going to make sure that I don't want to tension my yarn so it's real tight on the hook. I want it nice and loose so I don't pull too tight. Think of it more like you're embroidering and less like you're crocheting. The gauge of the hook is not important at this point. It's just a matter of getting those loops to lay where we want them to. So I'm going to jump all the way up here. I'm going to yarn over and pull my working loop up and pull it through the loop that's on the hook. You can see how it's laying flat, but see how big they are? They're really tall. Might be a little easier to see on the white here. Let's keep going. So I'm going to come up, bring the loop up, and keep going all the way up, straight up, And you see how tall those loops are? And you see how it's going straight, straight, straight up. So you're going to do this all the way to the other end of the work and end it off. And that's all there is to it. You just want to, like I said, go very gently, take your time and think of it more as an embroidery piece <laughs> than, a, uh, than a crochet piece because you don't want it to be too tight. All right, and there's our straight vertical chain. Thank you so much for joining us here on Yarnspirations.com. I hope you have a wonderful time creating the Crochet Blanket Ruana. It's certainly warm and luscious and spot on trend to be wearing this fall. Bye-bye.